<laughs> now, this is a good one. Uh, this says, hello, everybody. Thank you for posting this beneficial videos. My question is, I could not find Remedex in my country and people advise me, advise me to use proviron or zinc mineral, which has anti uh, aromatized properties. Do you think it has the similar functions as, as an aromatase inhibitor? Okay. Um, this is a great question because this goes into a lot of the misconceptions about uh, proviron and zinc. Proviron is a, a DHT-based uh, drug, and for a lot of people, it's great. Uh, what it does, and I think why this, I, I, I don't know if it's a gentleman or, or a lady, is bringing it up. I imagine it's a, it's a gentleman, um, but it is... Um, Proviron, uh, see the proviron is, is methylated DHT, so it will not convert to estrogen. So that's what we're talking about here. It's not to be used necessarily as something that's going to block the conversion of testosterone into estrogen, but it's something that has, uh, is actually very weak um, uh, androgenic slash anabolic effects compared to testosterone. But the advantage is uh, we, could, we could use it in, in medicine as, a, as an early trial. I don't know anybody who does anymore. First of all, it's an oral, so it's not the pre preferred method of, of doing it. And plus, methyl, the fact that it's methylated is the whole reason why we dropped methylated testosterone. It works great in the sense that it takes the liver a while to break it down, but it works great in the sense that it takes the liver a lot to break it down, which makes the liver work too hard. And so we drop that one. But um, again, it doesn't convert to, to estrogen, so uh, in that way it's good, but it really doesn't have that great an effect on, you know, libido, lack of energy like everybody likes, or, or what everyone's seeking, seeking when they come to, you know, to me for hormone replacement therapy. Zinc is great, and then we do have plenty of science behind the fact that it helps uh, to reduce the production of estrogen to some degree not going to replace an AI or, you know, a suicide inhibitor or an estrogen blocker. But it is a great idea. I mean, now we're just going into general health optimization. It is a great idea for sure to use some zinc in your system. As long as you don't overdo it too much. And remember, zinc and copper sort of balance one another out. So if you're going to use a lot of zinc, you got to make sure you throw in some copper too. Uh, but... I think the answer to the question is, can I use proviron and or zinc to replace uh, the use of an AI, in this case a Remedex? The answer would be no. If in, and he or she doesn't state the country he's in, um, I don't know, you know, maybe search for something else, you know, like one of these others we've mentioned before, eczema stain or, you know, even letrozole instead of uh, an astrozole. Um, uh, or, or, or just plain old tamoxifen, yeah. those are going to be better than proviron or zinc. Remember, proviron is not an estrogen blocker. It's just a substance, a DHT, that doesn't convert to estrogen. Why do, people like, why do body people like it so much pre-contest? Oh, that's an easy one. Because, I mean, in my opinion, I, I, I've, never, I've never used proviron. I don't write for it. Uh, but um, what we know it does is it will lower SHBG. What is that? And this is the brilliance behind it, the sex hormone binding globulin. We can use things other than proviron. We can use uh, danosol, which is a, really, it's not an anabolic steroid. It's considered, uh, you know, I, I think it still is listed as an anabolic steroid, but that's, quite frankly, retarded. It's, it's not an anabolic steroid. But what it does in, in a small amount is uh, it, it raises your free testosterone because your testosterone is bound by this sex hormone binding globulin. Okay, it lowers that, makes more of what you already have floating around, just not ready for use, available. And, and, and that's why, you know, low doses of things like, uh, you know, let, let's say you used, uh, let's call it 10 milligrams of, uh, of, of, uh, of uh, oxandrolone, Anvar, okay? Most people would agree that uh, these days, although remember, they used to make two and a half milligrams. 2.5, yeah, yeah, yeah. And people used to use that three times a day and get great results. But in today's world, most people would say, 
that's nothing in terms of anabolic effect compared to taking, you know, uh, well, a replacement dose of Anivar can, can range up to 40 milligrams. I mean, if you use that as your hormone replacement for a male, you go to 40 milligrams, that's considered hormone replacement value. Again, it all depends upon the, the numbers we get and how you feel more important than anything else, but that's a starting point. So if you use one quarter of that, you're not going to get anything from the Anivar difference, meaning it's way more anabolic yeah. than is testosterone, right? But what you do get is that reduction with just that little amount of Anivar in sex hormone and binding globulin, so you're getting more juice for the squeeze. You're getting more, we've talked about this before, getting you know, 2% free to 3% free, that's a 50% increase. Right. And you could effectuate that with just a little bit of something that really in and of itself isn't gonna do anything for you directly. Does that make sense? So in this, uh, oh, you just asked a separate question. It yeah. wasn't uh, in regard to this person. Yeah. But I think that's why pre people use Proviron because it has that effect of lowering sex hormone binding glo globulin. It's not, you know, the DHT yeah. effect and all that. And, I mean, it's nice not to have a convert to estrogen for a lot of people. Yeah. But I think what most people get out of it, and it's not to say that you don't get a little something out of DHT. It does put some lead in your pencil. I call it the caveman testosterone. It's not ideal because of the side effects you can get from DHT. Yeah. But I think what most people get out of it, whether it's pre-contest or not, is that reduction in uh, sex hormone binding. And most of the time, when people go pre-contest, they're also using Anivar. So that combination is actually a good one. In the sense that, yeah, there's no risk of conversion into estrogen from those. But that goes into probably, I, I think we talked about this before, the risk of being uh, repetitive. Don't forget, you still if you're using testosterone, okay, and then you add something that, quote, unquote, doesn't convert to estrogen, don't forget, assuming they're both wearing the same pair of tennis shoes, okay, and can get to the AR, uh, you know, the androgen receptor uh, the same way, they get to the cell and affect the DNA. Half the time, Anivar is getting there. Half the time... Testosterone's getting there. That means half the time testosterone's not getting there, and you have more, if you will, available for conversion into estrogen. And that's where I win bets all the time. I have yet to lose a bet because somebody will say, "You know, Doc, I started, I added this to my program. I'm, I, I've got gynecomastia now. I, I got to get tested for for uh, prolactin because you know I added I added decadroblin, and uh, you know I'm just sharing with you, and I think that's the problem." <coughs> Never lost a bet. I've even said, I will pay for your labs if I'm wrong. The problem is you need more of the, the AI because that's what's happening. Yeah. yeah. You know, let's say DECA doesn't convert at all. In fact, a little bit of it does. But it's, you know, most people think of DECA and, oh, prolactin, oh, you know, never seen it happen. It's that mechanism where, okay, yeah, but you just, you just displaced, yeah. you know, your, your, your baseline testosterone levels and everything that was going along with your baseline. So you've got more available to convert. Boom. Boom. <laughs> Thanks, Doc.